very warm welcome to you all for our service hang, of hang on, celebration hang on. and welcome. Hang on. Hang on. Still seven o'clock, please, Nigel. You said we were live now. We are. We, we're showing a nice little sort of screen. Uh, nobody heard that, did they? It's a bit late to worry now, Mark. <laughs> it is rather, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> That's full start. Sorry, sorry, Nigel. It's still 18.58, so two minutes to go. Oh, I'm so... Oh, gosh, Jess. Probably. We can, we can always edit this out when Netflix buys it up. <laughs> Chris, Carol, Rachel, you're still all muted. That that's okay, Nigel. I shall unmute before I come to preach. I hope. Okay. Yeah, you you don't really want to hear me sing the hymns, do you? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. No. A very warm welcome to you all for our service of celebration and welcome for the Reverend Chris Ambler, whom the conference has appointed to serve as presbyter in this, the Canic Chase circuit. We welcome Chris into our circuit family, along with his wife, Jackie, and daughters, Carrie and Rachel. And we offer them our warmest greetings and ask God's blessing on their ministry among us. As always, it's a time of change and challenge for our circuit. In April this year, we welcomed three new lay workers, Mark, Melody and Rosie, whose commissioning service along with our existing workers will be celebrated in due course. It might be on Zoom, or if we're very lucky, it could take place in real life. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a time of trauma and anxiety for many, and as church buildings are beginning to reopen, there's a widespread recognition that its weak percussions will continue to be with us for many years. The personal and social and economic impacts of COVID-19 on our churches and communities are significant and provide both an immediate and long-term context within which our ministry and mission will be exercised over the next few years. At the same time, the lockdown has proven to be a time of great creativity in our churches. Our life of witness has continued, and we have learned things in a few months, which in normal times might have taken us several years. We don't want to lose what we have learned, nor the opportunity it creates for us to reflect on what we really need for the future. The business of ministry, as you know, encompasses a vast and varied array of tasks and duties, which I know will be well served by Chris's skills and wisdom and experience, especially with his heart for work with Food Bank and Night Shelter. Chris, from Halifax, originally comes to us having served as superintendent minister in the Stoke North Circuit with his background in both the carpet and travel industries, we expect that his expenses will be low as he'll surely be getting around on a flying carpet. Thank you, Mark and Carol, for setting up this service on Zoom and for weekly circuit services shown on YouTube. I'd like to thank our, our circuit stewards in particular, 
their own Lovell and Neil Embry for their work in Chris's relocation, including a short stay in the Premier Inn, which acted as a sort of substitute Noah's Ark in order to survive the Great Flood. And to thank you all for the work you do, for the time and talents you offer, and ask God's blessing on our work and witness together as a circuit. It's good to have with us the Reverend Rachel Parkinson, Chair of the Wolverhampton Shrewsbury Methodist District, who will be preaching this evening. After a time of quiet, we share in the peace which Jesus Christ offers to us and to all the world. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us therefore keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray. God of truth, you are worthy of higher praise than we can offer, but of purer worship than we can imagine. By your Holy Spirit, assist us in our prayers and draw us to yourself, so that what is lacking in our thoughts and actions and in our words and music may be supplied by your overflowing love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
gracious God, when we do not listen to you for your word in the words of others, forgive, forgive and, and renew us. When we do not use the gifts you have bestowed on us, forgive, forgive and, and renew, renew us. us. When we do not love one another as sisters and brothers in Christ, forgive, forgive and renew, and renew us. us. When we do not serve our neighbours in their need, forgive, forgive and, and renew, renew us. us. When we do not share the good news with those around us, forgive, forgive and, and renew us. us. God calls us to serve, forgives us in Christ, and renews us by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And the collect for today. God of all grace, you call your church to be a holy people to the praise of your name. In the power of your spirit, fill our hearts with your love and our lives with your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is taken from Isaiah 55, verses 8 to 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my mouth be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, be, thanks to be to God. The second lesson is from Acts chapter 16, verses 6 to 10. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak to the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So, passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
and may I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It's become my practice to ask ministers new to the district if there's any particular scripture passage they would like as part of their welcome service. There are some suggestions in the worship book, but I find that after a few years, there's a danger I end up just preaching basically the same welcome sermon with minor variations, which hardly does justice to the diversity of both ministers and circuit appointments within the district. That's how this evening we come to be reflecting on this passage from the Book of Acts, which Chris has suggested. One of the things I didn't ask Chris is what it is that he really takes from this scripture, which might mean I've seen something very different and will preach a different sermon from anything he might have expected. But if this happens tonight, it will be entirely in keeping with this story about Paul and Silas and their adventures. Let's start a little further back in Acts 14. Paul and Barnabas have made their first missionary journey. They were away perhaps a couple of years, visiting Cyprus and then setting sail to what is now Turkey, travelling away inland before retracing their steps and returning home via Antioch in Syria. There they called the church together and told everyone how God had opened a door of faith for the Gentiles. Hooray! Hallelujah! A short time later, Paul suggests to Barnabas that they set out on a sort of comeback tour, revisiting the churches they have planted. What might have happened then? Well, they might have agreed and gone back over old ground, and they might have kept on going back over old ground ad infinitum till the new places they'd planted for new people had become old and established. But that's not what happened. Paul and Barnabas had a blazing row over who should go with them. And out of this conflict, they go their separate ways. Barnabas starts a solo comeback tour in Cyprus, whilst Paul sets off with Silas picking up Timothy on the way. And together they push on into new territory, heading northwest towards the Black Sea. Paul, Silas and Timothy are pioneering new ground. What might have happened then? Well, God might have put a word on their lips and opened the ears of their hearers so that many were baptised in that region. God might have opened doors for them and shown them the way, because that's what's supposed to happen when Christians take a step of faith and become pioneers, isn't it? But that's not what happened. Luke says that the Holy Spirit forbids them to speak the word in these regions. I wonder what he is describing there. Is it that they were literally struck dumb when they came to speak, their lips sealed? Or is it perhaps that during this long journey, they felt a lack of inspiration? Their mission just didn't take off. People weren't interested in what they had to say. They couldn't even create enough of a stir to get themselves run out of town or thrown into prison as they'd been used to. And God doesn't so much open doors as close them, preventing them travelling to where they hope to go in Bithynia, leaving them no option but to head west along the coast road to the port city of Troas, where they effectively stall. Of course, they did have an option. They could have retreated back to the well-known places and familiar people of Paul's first missionary journey. But even though their mission seems so hard and blocked and barren, Paul, Silas and Timothy persist. Paul remains open to the spirit of God. And one night he has the vision of the man of Macedonia, which is modern day Greece, saying, come here, help us, we need you. 
As a result of this, the good news about Jesus takes an almighty leap forward, crossing into Europe for the first time. The ministry is almost immediately successful with the conversion of Lydia and her household. The team visit Philippi, Thessalonica, Corinth, all well known to us because of Paul's later letters to those who came to faith in those places. Ministry wasn't easy. As the word of God gains traction, it also attracts opposition and there's riots, protests, prison, the sort of reaction John Wesley stirred up in his travel so many centuries later. But Jesus' commission to his disciples in the first chapter of Acts is now being fulfilled. Jesus' followers have already borne witness to him in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria. Now that witness is beginning to spread to the ends of the earth. So what light might this episode from Paul's ministry shine onto our church life today? Here's a few bullet points, which I hope you have may have begun to pick up on already. First is that conflict, which has been a permanent reality throughout the life of the church, can sometimes paralyze the church, but it can also break ground for new possibilities. Secondly, that the pattern we see here is very common in pioneering outreach. It's quite common for there to be some early signs of great success, as happens on Paul and Barnabas' first missionary journey. But this is often followed by long and apparently quite barren periods where mission seems to stall and sometimes even go backwards. If we don't recognise this, we set ourselves up for disappointment with the pioneering projects which we can place so much hope, faith and finance in. I wonder, in Methodism, how many projects have been pulled up from the ground in this phase because they were judged to be not delivering quickly enough, where some faithful, patient persistence might have paid off. Paul shows us that when ministry enters an apparently barren phase, the temptation of making an early retreat to the familiar is to be resisted in favour of keeping on pushing on, staying open to the spirit, even when we feel uninspired. Trusting that sooner or later, the vision of the man from Macedonia will show up. Come here, we need you, help us. I remember a story from my time in Leicester. A Methodist church closed when the building problems became too great to deal with. There was hurt and some conflict. But a corner was turned when the circuit decided to use some of the money released to fund new schools outreach. And I remember a former member of the church that saying that their closure had provided the rocket fuel for this project. And that felt a good holy, faithful way of telling the story. So we recruited Jane, who was an excellent candidate for the role, a committed Christian and former deputy head teacher. And she started pushing on the doors of local schools and we expected them to open. We had been faithful and pioneering. The money was being spent. Now, surely God would make the whole thing fruitful. But the doors stayed mainly closed for the whole of the first year. It was not the story the people wanted to hear at the circuit meeting. But the circuit stuck with it and eventually a school opened its doors. Come, help us, we need you. They opened the doors in a way which touched both pupils and their families in a diverse and needy area. Of Leicester. Chris has been on the road for longer than Paul, almost as long as your superintendent, 36 years as one of Mr Wesley's travelling preachers. I feel sure he will have weathered conflict, both paralysing and productive. 
I'm sure there will have been times when ministry and mission has felt uninspired and uninspiring, and other times when it has felt fluid and fruitful. He was telling me of a recent example of stuckness when a property sale that should have been straightforward dragged on for a couple of years. But I also know that his patience and persistence led to new gospel ground being broken. Chris also arrives at a time when many doors are physically closed because of coronavirus. Like Paul and Silas travelling through the wild country to Troas, this terrain is difficult to negotiate. But Chris comes as one who will stay open to the spirit, one who will be with you in praying for that vision from God, that person from Macedonia inviting you into areas of spiritual and physical need. I pray that the circuit will be open to such visions and willing to sail into new territory in response so that the great commission of Jesus will be fulfilled and we will be witnesses to his saving, healing, forgiving, accepting love, even unto the ends of the earth. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I present to you Chris Ambler, whom the conference has appointed to serve in this circuit. Chris, will you hold before us the story of God's love and mercy, above all the gospel of our Saviour Jesus Christ? And will you be among us? as one who proclaims the word of God, administers baptism, presides at the Lord's Supper, teaches the faith, and cares for the flock. I will. I ask God to help me, and I invite you all to join with me in proclaiming the gospel of life and hope. Through Christ, we have good news and good Will you hold before us God's call to holy living? And be among us as one who awakens the careless and strengthens the faithful. I will. I ask God to help me and I invite you all to join with me 
in commitment to the way of Christ. May we, May we reveal Christ's way, way through, through our words and examples. Will you hold before us God's commitment to human community, to our neighbourhoods and all who live within them, and to the world that God has made? I will. I ask God to help me and I invite you all to join with me in sharing God's all-embracing love. May we, May respond, we respond to Christ, to Christ, Christ in the all we need. need. I thank you for your welcome in these uh, unusual times and unusual circumstances. And I trust not only will I work with you and pray for you, but that we may work together and pray for one another. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Oh, Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be to you a sacrifice. And I will praise you, Lord. And I will sing of love, come down. And as you show your face. We'll see your glory here. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Oh, Lord, you have my heart. I will search for you. Let me be to you a sacrifice. And I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you. And I will sing of love. Come. Eternal, ever-living God, we pray for those who this day need our prayers. Those we see around us on our computer screens and those who sit in other rooms in our homes, family and friends near and far, some of whom we have been able to see and hold, some still at physical distance but whom we long to embrace and breathe in their presence again. Be with them, Lord, as we are. Strangers and communities we will never meet or know, but those in peril we hear of and see on our television screens, 
We particularly think of the demonstrations in Dover today, so symbolic of the divided nature of how our communities are responding to the stranger. Be with them, Lord, and may your spirit work within all of us to bring healing and peace. We pray for those whose life is ebbing away, consumed by old age, frailty, illness or neglect. Lord, surround them with your gentle peace and guide them home. We pray for those who grieve deeply for lives and loves lost. And in particular, we're reminded of the call to prayer, prayers of remembrance for Methodist homes, for those who have lost their lives from, to the COVID-19 infection. We pray for them and all those who are working so hard to seek a vaccine and continue to offer care in hard places. We pray for those who cause grief and chaos in society and who live seemingly with different values from ours. Different values from their victims and their families. And we think particularly of those men in HMP Oakwood who have benefited from the splashes of Godlight coming from this circuit. And we pray that these may take root in their lives. We pray for those who are forgotten, unnoticed, unloved, unmissed. Those who use our food banks and other places of care and outreach. May your spirit continue to prompt and encourage us to be brave and take us of risk for the sake of your kingdom. We hold in our hearts and before you those who continue to fight for justice for fair trading practices, for religious freedom, for human rights, for a better environment. We pray for those who resist these endeavours because of profit, neglect or power. Turn their hearts of stone into soft, warm and loving hearts. And we pray for ourselves, that we may leave behind those things that we know deep inside of us are wrong, but cannot seem to let go. That we may be emboldened to tell of your grace and love to others, whether that be by our actions or by our words, but also to realise that we too, are blessed by this same grace, this same love, and that we are worthy. May we strive to keep doing the right thing as well as doing things right, and bless us with the sense to understand the difference. Lord God, in your abundance of mercy, love and peace. Hear these with all our other prayers. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that in every generation, you reveal your love for the world and set before your people your word of life and hope. We thank you for Jesus Christ, your son, in whom you have made known your way of perfect love and in whose dying and rising we see your final purpose. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who leads your people into all truth for the service and witness of your church and for the preaching of the word and the celebration of the sacraments through which you renew and strengthen us. All honor and glory be yours in the church and in the world, in time and in eternity, to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. the God of love stir up in us the gifts of his grace and sustain each of us in our discipleship and service. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit remain with us ever, remain with us all forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone. Every blessing to you, Chris, and don't forget to join us for our YouTube service tomorrow Sunday. The Lord be with you. God bless. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>